Uh, thanks, Mr. Hi. Mayor. So, um, people are suffering. There's no other way of putting it. So, these are people who have are in need of health services. They're in pain. Uh, they're off work. They are, in, in my specialty, they are losing function in their arms and limbs, and we're not able to get them into hospital. And this is a multifactorial problem that unfortunately is decades in the making and has been exacerbated by the pandemic. So we talk about scary figures. Well, there were 4 million people on a waiting list before the pandemic. There are now 6 million people and that's going to get worse. And unfortunately, this has wide ramifications for each and every person on that waiting list. These aren't just, these aren't just numbers we're talking about. Each of these is a tragic story. Uh, of someone who is suffering whilst they're waiting to get treatment. And that, in all of this conversation, is sometimes forgotten. What's it like having to tell people who are in pain that they're going to have to wait and wait? It's getting harder, uh, because normally at some point you'd be able to do something about it. But if you tell one person that you could expedite their surgery for whatever reason, another person's going to suffer. And I mean, this is the nature of any hospital, but uh, realistically, we're in a situation where we simply don't have the capacity nationwide to deal with this. And this comes about because the front line have not been listened to for quite a long time and have been screaming that we need more staff, we need more resource. And whilst we keep hearing about X amount of money being poured into the NHS, it's not being done in an appropriate fashion and not being directed to where it needs to be directed, which is to get more staff. And the tragedy of all of this is that I'm pretty sure when we hear the next policy announcement, whether it's an MRI scanner in the middle of the M25 or, you know, uh, an ultrasound scan in a shopping centre, fundamentally, it won't address the problem at the heart of this, which is, we need more staff, we need more doctors, we need more nurses, operating department uh, practitioners, we need mental health support. The ambulance services are crushing under the weight of, of the sort of demand at the moment. And a lot of the stuff when it's raised is ignored. And the people that suffer are the people on this waiting list. How quickly can more staff be brought in? So this needs a short and a long-term plan, and it needs to accept that you cannot get staff in without an appropriate immigration policy. There's no two ways about it. You can't magic up a doctor from a homegrown source for at least sort of six to ten years for them to be fully qualified and to be an independent practitioner. So you have to accept that you have to recruit internationally. So beyond that, you have to have a dual plan to train doctors and to recruit doctors internationally as well. So the classic line from governments of all stripes and all colours and all parties is to say, we will train more homegrown doctors. That has been the same line for the last 50 years. And guess what? We're not training enough. And the simple fact is we will never train enough. So in 1971, the number of internationally qualified doctors in the NHS was about 30%. Today, is it, about, it is about 34%. So all of those promises for all that time has not resulted in a cha fundamental change in the figures. And realistically, it needs to an acceptance that will not have changed going forward. And so whilst appealing to a certain demographic of voters may be appealing, if politicians and governments actually want to deal with this problem, you have to look at the problem as it is, which is we need staff. So we talk about getting through, making headway in the backlog, take one subgroup of staff, anaesthetists, who everybody will appreciate if you don't have enough anaesthetists, you cannot get through this backlog. Currently, this country is short of 1,400 anaesthetists, according to a Royal College of Anaesthetists report in September of 2021. On top of that, a quarter of current consultants anaesthetists are thinking of leaving in the next five years. And they are citing things like issues with um, pension changes, etc., as the reason for them leaving the service. In that situation, you cannot hope to make any headway into this backlog without addressing this, uh, both staff recruitment and staff retention appropriately.